Happy Easter. We're so glad that you're joining this online Easter service. And we're your host for this service. I'm Abel and this is Jacinta. And we're so glad that you're here with us. Today is Easter Sunday. It's the day we celebrate the risen Jesus and we can know Him because He's alive. So we're going to start with some worship. But before we do that, Abel's going to pray for us. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that the power of your resurrection wasn't just a story in history, but it's a story for us today. So we worship you right now and we invite you, come by your Holy Spirit as we hear your word and as we encounter you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's worship.
Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we have the privilege of worshipping you today. We pray for everyone around the world who doesn't have that privilege. We pray for conflict and unrest and people who are not able to worship you freely. We, we just pray for all these countries that are going through turmoil right now. We pray that the Prince of Peace will rest in those spaces. We pray for you to show up in their lives that they may know you today. And Lord, we thank you for this country that we get to call home. We pray that over uh, Malaysia today, as churches celebrate Easter, that your light would shine through the darkness of society, of family, of workplaces that need your light. And Lord, we pray that you would use our church, HTBB, uh, to be part of your work for this country as well. We thank you for the work that you're doing through this church. And we pray that as a church, as a community, uh, we would carry the hope of Easter, that we would be an Easter people wherever we go. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thank you so much for leaning in in worship. And we just want to say a huge thank you for all the ways that you serve and give. It really makes a difference every time you give. And so uh, QR codes are going to come up and you can scan to give. So let's take a moment now to give. Thank you so much for your generosity in giving. Right now, we're going to be hearing the word that's going to be shared to us by the vicar of HTBB, Reverend Miles. Uh, Miles also heads up Alpha Asia Pacific. He's got a great word for us on this Easter Sunday. So let's lean in and let's watch what he has to say. Happy Easter, everyone. Now, what's Easter Sunday all about? Is it more than bunnies and chocolate eggs? Actually, Easter is the largest and most celebrated religious festival on the planet. Easter has been called the birthday of hope. Maybe you could do with a little bit of extra hope in your life right now. So why is Easter Sunday, this day when we remember the resurrection of Jesus, why is it all about hope? Well, the context for our reading today is that Jesus had been crucified on the Friday and buried in a tomb. It all looks very final. Hopes and dreams in his followers had been dashed. Maybe you know what that feels like to have your hopes and dreams dashed. And then early on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a follower of Jesus, she went to the tomb and she sees that the stone at the entrance had been rolled away. She goes and tells two disciples, Peter and John, about it. And they run to the tomb and they look in. And all that was there were Jesus's grave clothes. The only things of value which would have been worth stealing had robbers been and raided the tomb. But the grave clothes were there. However, the body of Jesus was not. And this is where we pick up our reading. I'm gonna read it to you. This is John chapter 20, verses 10 to 18. Then the disciples went back to their homes but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking that he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. 
Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Instead, go to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Wow, this is the event that changes everything. It's the event that changes human history, that changes our existence and our future, that brings hope for you and for me. It's hard to understand the full consequences and impact of the resurrection of Jesus, but I want to pull out three things in this passage that explain what the resurrection means for you and for me. The first is this, the resurrection of Jesus turns despair into hope. Twice in this passage, Mary is asked, first of all by the angels and then by the risen Jesus himself, She's asked, woman, why are you crying? Are you crying on the inside? Have you experienced pain, loss or despair? The resurrection of Jesus changes everything and can turn despair into hope. In verse 15, Mary mistakes Jesus at first as the gardener. John, who writes these verses, here he's alluding to the fact that Adam... The, the initial human was placed in the Garden of Eden, right at the beginning of the Bible, to care for the garden. But he messed up. However, the risen Jesus is presented as the second Adam, as St. Paul will describe him, as the perfect gardener, the one ushering in new creation. You see, all things changed with the resurrection of Jesus. It means that death is no longer the end. It means that one day you too will rise from the dead. It means your life is not destined to be trapped in a dark place like a tomb. It means that things can be new in your life and things can be renewed. And this isn't just general hope for humanity. It's also specific hope for you. Notice how it's when Jesus addresses Mary, not with the general term of respect, woman, but with her personal name, Mary, that she finally recognises it's Jesus and that he's alive. And the risen Jesus always brings hope and change for the better, turning despair into hope and life. About six weeks ago, I was in South Africa and I met a guy there called Manda. Manda had a, a really tough childhood and upbringing and eventually ended up in Polsmoor Prison, which is probably the toughest prison in the whole of South Africa. But whilst in prison, he heard about the good news of the risen Jesus and he put his faith in Christ. And almost immediately, Jesus began to change him on the inside, to give him fresh vision for his life and to give him hope for the future. And one way in which this played out in Manda's life in prison was he, he'd get his, his, his phone, he'd put his headphones in and he'd online register for courses and he began to study. He had a new hunger to learn and, and try to prepare for the future for which he now had hope in Christ. And it's very difficult, as you can imagine, to study when you're in a place like Polsmoor Prison. So Manda at times would even break the rules just so that he'd get put in the solitary confinement punishment cell so he could finally study in peace and quiet. And amazingly, by the time he finished his time in prison, Manda had qualified with a degree. He came out of prison and today he's an underwriter with a fantastic job doing so well. Whatever the despair that you face, the risen Jesus, the resurrection, turns your despair into hope. The second thing we see about the resurrection is this. There is more to life. Don't settle for what was. The risen Jesus tells us not to get stuck trying to hold on to what we have or once had, nor to merely relive the faith or intimacy with God that you might have had in the past, but you no longer experience in the presence. You see, three times in this chapter, 
Mary complains that they've taken my Lord away. And she even says to Jesus before she recognises who he is, she says, look, if you've moved the body, tell me where and I'll, I'll go and get it. It's all, almost as if she'd rather keep hold of what she once had, even if it's now dead, than to embrace the hope and the life of the new. Now, this might sound silly, but let's be honest, how many of us actually do settle for something less simply because it's what we know and because of fear of change? A number of years ago, I used to serve uh, as a clergy at HTB, Holy Trinity Brompton, the church in London. And round where the church was, that part of London, there was uh, an older lady who uh, was homeless. And she was sort of known in the area because each day she would walk around the streets of London carrying all these bags, lots of heavy bags, packed full of rubbish. Basically things she'd collected over the years that were of no worth or value, empty bottles and cans and blankets. And, and she'd just spend all day, every day, burdened, walking around with these bags and bags of rubbish. Now, what none of us knew was that actually a number of years beforehand, a very, very wealthy relative of hers had passed away and left everything to her. She actually owned a condo in one of the most expensive parts of London. It was full of priceless paintings. Uh, she'd inherited millions. And yet she was still living on the street, carrying around bags of rubbish every day. Well, finally, unfortunately, this woman passed away herself. And we said, OK, we'll do the funeral at the church. And we expected it, the church to be empty. But the old adage proved to be true. Where there's a will, there's relatives. And the church was packed out on her funeral with relatives who'd come from all around the globe seeing what they might get. And we were left with this astonishing question. Why would a woman who owned this amazing apartment and had all, all this wealth, why would she choose to live on the street with bags of rubbish? And the honest answer was she was afraid of change. And whilst we might think that's crazy, when we really think about it, how far do we actually go about our daily lives carrying emotional baggage from the past around with us, burdens that we don't need to carry any longer, holding on because of fear? The risen Jesus says, it's okay, let go. There's better things for you. There's more with me. And Mary does eventually realise that it's the risen Jesus. And when she does, Jesus says something to her really quite surprising in verse 17. He says this, Do not hold on to me, for I've not yet returned to the Father. Now, this was not Jesus being insensitive to Mary, but rather he's saying, look, don't settle for what was or what is when there's so much more with me. Firstly, there was more for Jesus himself to do before returning to the Father. After his resurrection, the risen Jesus appeared to over 500 people on at least 11 separate occasions over a 40 day, about a six week period. And then he ascended into heaven where he is now seated on the throne at the right hand of the Father, completing his journey from the cross, going from thorns to throne. You see, Jesus now reigns from her heaven above it all, in control of everything. He is in control of your life. Secondly, there is also more for us than holding on to the past. There's more life, more hope, more freedom in the spirit when we follow the risen Jesus. You know, um, the nation of Philippines that was once under colonial rule, one of the catalysts that moved them towards independence and freedom was an amazing novel written by a man called Jose Rizal. The novel is called Nolimi Tangere, which in Spanish 
means exactly these words of Jesus to Mary. It means, don't hold on to me. And the freedom that those words inspired for the Filipino nation are also words for you and me today. I wonder, do you feel trapped in a tomb or a dark place, as it were, buried under pressure or circumstance or expectations? Today, you can walk right out into the freedom, new life and hope in the risen Jesus Christ. And of course, thirdly, Jesus says, don't hold on to me, Mary, because there's more for her to do and there's more for us to do. Jesus then says to Mary, go instead and tell them, tell the other disciples. And this leads on to the final consequence of the resurrection, which is this. The resurrection of Jesus means that your life has purpose. You see, after Jesus' command to go, we read this in verse 18. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. You see, Mary Magdalene was the first witness of the risen Jesus and the first evangelist to tell other people about it. Even though she was a woman with a dubious past, which would have meant that her testimony would not have been valid in a Jewish court of law. So why did God choose Mary to be the first witness and evangelist when her testimony would not have been valid in a court? Well, I think God did that because he's saying no one is excluded. Everyone has a role to play in my kingdom. And that includes you. You see, a few verses later, the risen Jesus then appears to the other disciples when they're in a room. And he says this to them in verses 21 and 22. Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. In those verses, we see that the risen Jesus brings us peace. Peace be with you. He brings us purpose. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. And he gives us power. With that, he breathed on them the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit. He commissioned them and then empowered them by his Holy Spirit. And he does exactly the same for you and me today. There's a, a great family in our church, HTBB. And um, a while back, uh, they came into Bukit Bintang um, and uh, the dad and the son uh, dropped off uh, uh, the mum, Jenny, and the daughter. And uh, they dropped them off at the drop-off point just outside Fahrenheit Mall on Bukit Bintang. And uh, Jenny and her daughter were about to go shopping. When Jenny happened to notice that there at the drop-off point, there was like a, a limo cab just there. And she saw through the driver's window that the driver didn't look very well. So Jenny knocked on the window and eventually the window came down. And there sitting in the driver's seat was an uncle and he his a shirt was all unbuttoned. He was sweating profusely and struggling to breathe. And then eventually in Cantonese, he managed to say, I can't breathe. At which point another passerby uh, walked along, looked through the car window and said to Jenny, oh, he's having a heart attack. And rather unhelpfully then walked off. Jenny thought, oh no, what do I do? Uh, and there was a, a security guard there. And she said, we need to call an ambulance. And the security guard said, oh, I've just called one. But, you know, ambulances take a long time to arrive. And that particular day, the jam was terrible on Bukit Bintang. So Jenny thought, well, at least an ambulance had been called for. Surely that's enough. And she was about to walk off to go shopping with her daughter when she said she heard a voice in her ear. And the voice said this, I died for you that you might live. Can you not help this man? And she was like, huh? Is that you, Jesus? So she thought, okay, what to do, what to do? So she turned to her daughter and said, look, could you try and hail down a, a taxi? 
on Bukit Bintang. I'll try and get uncle out of the car and then we'll put him in the taxi to go to, to a hospital. So the daughter amazingly got a taxi to pull in. Uh, Jenny managed to get the uncle out of his car, closed the door, locked locked the car and they bundled him into the taxi and she said to the taxi driver take him to Tongshin Hospital and she was about to close the door on the taxi when again she heard the voice in her ear say will you not go with him so she turned to the daughter and said actually do you mind if we go with him to the hospital and she said yeah mum let's go so Jenny jumped in the front the daughter jumped in the back with the man and they started to move but the traffic was terrible in Bukit Bintang. So Jenny suddenly had what I call her Moses moment. moment. She jumped out of the taxi and just as Moses, uh, with the, the power of the Lord, p- Lord, parted the Red Sea, Jenny was there like parting the sea of traffic on Bukit, Bukit Bintang. And eventually the, the taxi got to the crossroads. She jumped back in, they turned around and off they went. Well, Jenny started to pray out loud in the taxi but in what she describes as broken Cantonese, but mainly ended up praying in English, praying for the, the, all the traffic to be clear, uh, that God would heal the guy, that they'd get to the hospital in time. The daughter was in the back, laying hands on him, praying, praying. They managed to get his phone out, saw that he had a daughter, called the daughter to tell her to go to the hospital. They then called the hospital so they were ready to receive, and eventually they pulled into the hospital. The team were already there with a stretcher. They took him right in. They registered the guy, um, and then the daughter arrived. They handed over the car keys, said where it was, gave him the possessions, and then they left. The next day was Sunday. So Jenny and her family came to church. And then after church, they thought, well, let's go to the hospital and see what happened to the uncle. So they turned up at Tongshin Hospital, and they were told he's in this ward. They walked in, and amazingly, there he was, sitting up in bed, looking completely well and better. So they went in and, and said hi, and uh, the, the guy in the bed said, look, amazingly, the doctor said to me that if I'd arrived one or two minutes later, I'd be dead. But I got to the hospital just in time um, to receive treatment. And Jenny said, oh, I'm so sorry, we're, we're in the taxi. Uh, you know, I was my Cantonese is not very good, but I was praying for you. And the guy suddenly, the uncle suddenly started speaking in perfect English and said, oh, I speak, I speak English. I knew exactly what you were praying. And then he said this to her, thank you, you saved my life. And Jenny said, oh no, I didn't. Jesus saved your life. And the man said, yes, I know that Jesus has saved my life, but I also know that he chooses to work through people like you. Jesus is at work in the world, the risen Jesus. He's in control, but he chooses to work through you and me. You have a purpose. And just as the risen Jesus breathed his spirit on those disciples to empower them to fulfill that purpose. I'd love to pray for you right now that this Easter Sunday, you'd receive afresh the spirit of the risen Christ. So let's pray. I want to pray, come Holy Spirit, the spirit of the Lord. Would you come now and fill everyone watching this with your presence, with your power. Lord, those that are in despair, crying right now, would you breathe new hope into them? For those who have settled for what was or what is, would you stir us to begin to dream and hope and believe for what will be in the future, freedom and life in you? And Lord, For those who feel trapped in a tomb or a cave or a dark place, would you help them walk out into the light and fresh air of the new dawn of resurrection life in you? Bring your power and your healing, we pray. And thank you that there is life in your spirit because of your resurrection. And I pray this all in the mighty name 
of Jesus. Amen.
Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus that you could join us for this Sunday service on Easter Sunday online and a QR code is going to pop up. You can scan it if you'd like any prayer. Our team will get in touch with you. We'd love to be able to pray with you for anything at all. And allow me to pray a prayer of blessing over you. So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Have a great week ahead. We loved having you here and we will see you very soon. Happy Easter.